2014 sees the country mark the centenary of the start of the First World War. For me, that meant a personal journey of discovery as I researched the war service of my great-grandfather, Charlie Adams, and then shared that family history with my two sons, Tom and Elliot, during a camping trip to France and Belgium. We were joined by a good friend, Andy Baker, who is a fellow club member, together with his son Oliver and stepson Ben. Researching Charlie's history before our trip was harder than I expected. Charlie was a bus driver from London who transported troops to the front line, often under fire. The buses were known as Old Bills, and when I searched online for more information about them, I came across this old British Pathé newsreel footage. You can imagine how I felt when I watched it for the first time and realised that here was my great-grandfather. It was quite a moment. Our camping trip began in the same way as the troops on their way to fighting the war, by crossing the English Channel. Our journey was a world apart though, aboard P&O Ferries Spirit of Britain, booked through the club's travel service. Elliot and I spent time looking back at England and the famous White Cliffs of Dover as we set sail and talked about how the troops would have felt doing the same journey nearly a century before. After disembarking, we drove straight off to our campsite, Chateau de Gonspet, north of Saint-Omer in France. It's a pretty site and proved a great base to explore the surrounding area and the battlefields and war grave cemeteries. Tom, Elliot and I pitched our test tent, a wild country Hooli 6, while Andy and the boys also set up camp. We had brought our kit in a tow bag fold away trailer and were touring the area in a Kia Karens 3, which proved to be great for the job. Once we'd set up camp, we took to the road. Andy knows this area well, having visited before, and it wasn't long before we were heading to our first stop, driving through pretty countryside and picturesque towns and villages. The area is full of war cemeteries, large and small. A sad reminder of the price those men paid for serving their country. During our tour, we visited a number of Commonwealth War Grave Commission cemeteries and also Canadian memorial sites. To make it more interactive for the boys, Andy would set them tasks to find certain gravestones. They had to find the grave of Captain Noel Chavas, one of only three men to have twice been awarded the Victoria Cross. At Paul Capel British Cemetery, they had to find the grave of a boy believed to be the youngest battle casualty, Private John Condon of the Royal Irish Regiment. He was aged just 14, barely older than our own boys. We paused on a number of occasions to reflect on family members who'd served in the war, and we also spent time looking back, particularly at the areas Charlie had served in, using the map and itinerary from one of his own peacetime visits. Our visit to the Belgium town of Ypres was especially poignant. Charlie had served here and had revisited the town during his tours, but Andy's family history was also vividly illustrated here at the Menin Gate, which lists the names of 54,000 men whose graves are unknown. We visited many sites during our tour, including the battlefields of the Somme. But it was here at Vimy Ridge, where Canadian soldiers fought and died, that the boys saw preserved trench systems and tried to imagine life as it was here a century ago. Here at Vimy Ridge, we also walked to the striking Canadian National Vimy Memorial. The monument, which bears the names of 11,285 Canadian soldiers, was another moving reminder of why we had brought the boys here. I like to think that both Charlie Adams and John Fishendom would have been pleased with our visit to show younger generations what it meant to live and to die here in the First World War 100 years later. <laughs>